still have the Drew, the real Drew this time. Look at that, that hat. I do enjoy the hat. I yeah. want one. Happy Tuesday, everybody. You are watching Splash Pages. My name is Leo. I'm the monkey behind the keyboard here. We have an amazing show scheduled for you, as always. And uh, with us, we'll kick it over to Carrie. How's it going? Hey, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Um, it's going great. I've got Rana Tosker here hanging out. Hinata is super excited about our guest tonight because she's all about the Batman. And we read some Batman for this that he drew. And yeah, speaking of Drew, let's go see Drew. Drew, what the fuck? You're not no. in bed already. Drew. Drew. Psst. Drew. Is it time for the show? Is our guest here? Oh my god, what time is it? Is it is it eight o'clock? Is it time to light the light? Wait, wrong show. I mean, um <laughs> hi everybody. I'm Drew and I overslept, but I'm here and we have a great guest. And before we can introduce that guest, we're going to take a quick survey from Jeremy. So, Jeremy. Survey. Survey says it's another Tuesday night and we're watching Splash Pages. Woo! <laughs> Look at that right off the cuff. Love it. That, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. So, uh, am I introducing or is Drew introducing? I, I, I'll, I'll introduce. I just needed a minute. Oh, okay. Here's, uh, I'll give you 15 more seconds, okay? Okay, hold on. 14, and now, <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Drew Mallo. Hey, how you doing? Uh, if you had an idea of what I'm doing tonight, the answer is nope. So, but brought to you, everybody, we have a great guest here. We got to interview him at last year's Terrific Con. He's been on my bucket list forever, and he is a super nice guy, wonderfully pleasant. He not only agreed to do an interview with us then, he agreed to come on the show again. Is he a glutton for punishment? We don't know yet, but we're going to find out soon. Uh, he is a legendary creator. If you're a Green Arrow fan, you have rooted for his work. But also, if you, you're not a big fan of Oliver Queen and the fact that he failed his city, um, <laughs> you know... You can also catch him on other things. He did Green Hornet. He did Godzilla. He did other work as well. He's worked in animation. He's worked at being a really pleasant person in person. And I'm botching this. So instead, the one, the only, legendary creator, Bill Hester, everyone. Yay. Hi, everybody. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you for joining us. It's an absolute pleasure to have you. It's uh, This is going to be a fun show. It, it, it is. Absolutely. Yeah. So, all right, we're, we're, are, are we live? Oh shit! We, we 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 are live. Oh, I'm sorry, I took a micro nap. Okay, 
You so, forgot so, to mention you forgot to mention one other possibility that oh. I simply forgot. I simply forgot that I already talked to you at Terrificon. Oh, uh, okay, cool. That, that's this okay. a whole new adventure. Listen, it's okay. Why don't you just take aim but and then, shoot that arrow right in my heart? So, like, just no, now that I've seen, now that oh. I've seen faces, I remember. Okay, that's, no, that's fine. You know, it's just I'm 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 demised, but we're gonna keep on the show because I'm professional. So someone else talk because I'm 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 done. Well, all right, Ooh. Phil. How did we get into comics? How did it all begin for you? Were you uh, a big collector as a kid, or did you fall into it later? No, I think like almost like most professionals, I started as a reader, as a fan, and um, I, we were talking a little bit about the show that I grew up in, sort of a, a rural environment, and. You were never really sure about getting the next issue of your comic. This is before comic shops. And mm -hmm. so uh, if a book ended on a cliffhanger, you're never really sure that you were going to get the next issue or, or see the, you know, see the actual ending. Because not only was it before comic shops, it was before trade paperbacks. So mm -hmm. if you wanted to find out how like the Carvac saga went, you'd had to go like find them, like the actual mm -hmm. comics. So uh, occasionally there'd be a story that ended on a cliffhanger and I like couldn't wait to see what happened and i was somebody who always liked to write and always liked to draw so i would write and draw my own endings to those books oh, and nice. just for fun and about age 12 it occurred to me that all those names that i saw at the front of the comic book those were real people <laughs> those were the people that made the comic Whoa. and if i was already doing this as a kid maybe someday i would be able to grow up and be one of those people in the front of the comic mm -hmm. so that sort of set me on that path. And then thankfully there were, you know, a few like-minded people uh, in uh, junior high and high school who are also into comics too. And we took it upon ourselves to like make our own comics. And we were like overly serious about it. We, we acted like we had deadlines. We acted like, you know, if I was the editor on one book and the other people were the talent, they were the editor on my book and I was the talent. And we kept each other like, you know, uh, we kept to each other to schedules and deadlines and things like that. And That's so we funny. were we were basically playing at being a comic book company. Mm -hmm. um, but it was great training for exactly. I was going to say, you know, actually, what? like I, st I started working in comics in college. And I don't think without those um, self-made comics in junior high and high school, I would have been ready for that. Do you still have any of those? I do. You'll never see. Oh, them. nice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what was the name of one of them? Uh, we did a book. Uh, well, what started it all was a book called Captain Squatty Body, um, because we had a an algebra teacher who was uh, a diminutive fellow, and everybody hated him because he was well. Now, hates the wrong word. He was an irascible sort. So, it like, loathe. Phil, that used low. No, I wouldn't even say that. He had we he, he had sort of a like a playful, oh, okay, a, play, a playfully antagonistic relationship to his students. So okay. we were the first set of students to give back, and so we we made up a comic book about him, and he was yeah. a superhero based at our school, and all mm -hmm. the villains were the other teachers, and we thought we were doing something like really subversive, um, but when the teachers saw these books. Because like I said, I was in really small school. Mm -hmm. So we'd actually go up to the office and run off copies of this book that we would give out to other students. Oh, and nice. um, we thought we, you know, we thought we were being dangerous, you know. <laughs> and when the, when the teacher saw them, they were like, oh, yeah, I need to be in the next issue. I need to be the villain next issue. Oh, my God. They wanted, be, they wanted to be part of it. So that was the one that started it. And then we did a we did a, a bunch of anthologies. We did a horror anthology, a fantasy anthology. That's amazing. Yeah. We did a swamp book, swamp monster book. We did um, a superhero book and then a parody of that superhero book. And we even did a, we even did like a, uh, a parody of like a Vampirilla type sex comedy too. Oh. Like, a, you know, whatever understanding a seventh grade boy has about sex, which is, Oh, everything. <laughs> but, we know it all. Wow. You did all this. I wasted all of my For seven real. days trying to <laughs> figure out algebra and puberty and yeah. and, and the travails. You're, you're like, 
I'm just creating a mini comic book enterprise. I'm Captain Underpants before it was Captain Underpants. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm, just like, I'm just like, I wasted we, seventh grade. Well, like I said, we're pretty rural. And like, if you weren't like into football and beer, this like what there was was making your, I mean, we were even sort of pre D and I mean, like D and D kind of broke yeah. like in the middle of my high school. So like um, that was like all there was to do. And we would like on top of that, we would do stuff like play basically fantasy football with comic book lineups. You know, it'd be like, oh, you know who would be great on the Avengers? If we could take Michael Golden off Micronauts, put him on Avengers. And wow. then we'll move, you know, well, and you're talking about would, creators. That's interesting. Yeah, we would, we would do that like, you know, that's how deeply nerdy we were. So. That's awesome. No problem. Let's, let's make this the thing. Can we please? We'll have a splash pages fantasy creator night. Yeah, it's, right. it, it's fun. Yeah. It, I mean, I mean, it's fun if you're, like I said, a seventh grade boy who'd never kissed a girl. It was a lot of fun. Oh, okay. it's listen. We're, <laughs> we're, we're, we've all, we've all. I think everyone here has kissed a girl, at least once. So you know, I I, I would say we could still have that kind of fun. It's just a little different. But yeah. moving on. Um, but so the, so the one thing that I, I definitely wanted to still bring up, because when I was doing my research before meeting you, Phil, at, at Trificon this year, I, I was so fascinated about you, you had your beginnings in animation and, and you had worked on, and I think we brought this up in the interview, you had worked on like three shows that I was like, these were like pinnacles. I think it was Men in Black, Bat. It was either Batman or Superman, and both. Uh, thank you, both. So, and it was it Big Guy and Rusty. Yeah, Big Guy and Rusty. And <clears throat> but that uh, that actually wasn't my beginning. That was sort of like my mid career crisis. Mm -hmm. um, I was probably just about thirty, and I had drawn. I had had a long run on Swamp Thing, mm -hmm. and I sort of felt like you know how you sort of like. Um, I think the actors talk about this too. Once you get one big role, you think it's on, it's never going to end. Mm -hmm. And I had Swamp Thing and I thought I would just keep rolling on to the next book and the next book. And I hit sort of a, a weird patch where I did a, a bunch of work for Kitchen Sink Press. If you remember Kitchen Sink at all, mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody here is old enough. Um, but uh, they went out of business owing me a lot of money. So I like really panicky. I started oh. looking for work other places and mm -hmm. um, one of those places was animation and um i was lucky that it was sort of the golden age of adventure animation mm -hmm. um, and at that time all the existing storyboard artists were sort of trained for humor and animation and there were a lot of real action-minded storyboarders right and so like warner brothers actually put an ad in the cbg for people that don't know what the CBG was, it was like the weekly newspaper of comics read by professionals and fans alike. And they put an ad in the CBG as like, if you think you can storyboard, if you're a superhero artist and think you can storyboard, send us your work. And I just sent in copies of my of my comics and they hired me to board like on the spot. That's awesome. Nice. So I spent about a year doing that. But it was it was sort of, you know, well, it's not the middle anymore because I'm ancient. But like uh, it was sort of the, like ten years into my career, I I spent a year in animation. That's so, so cool. I mean, like looking back on it, like it's just so crazy. Like you worked on these shows. I mean, again, we're fans, so we're watching it. But oh, you yeah. were creating it, man. Like yeah. Well, I was a fan too. Like I really loved, especially the Batman show. Like mm -hmm. in my in my studio, I had a poster of. You know, that very first, I think the very first like comic shop poster for the Batman, the animated series. Yeah. That was, that was hanging in my studio when I applied to work on that oh, show. Wow. And, crazy. you know, I didn't, because I stayed remote, I stayed in Iowa. I didn't move out to California to work. Right. And because of that, they were always like clear to me that like, listen, if somebody, <laughs> if somebody that can do this as well as you and is willing to come out to California, they'll probably get your job. And I was like, that's cool because there's no money on earth that can get me to move to mm. Los Angeles. <laughs> and um, uh, the person that came along was Darwin Cook. 
And wow. <laughs> yeah. And so Darwin Cook came down from Canada and like blew the doors off it at Warner Brothers. Mm -hmm. So totally. I moved off of that onto Men in Black and then Big Guy and Rusty, which were all um, and then assorted other little jobs here and there. But that year was like a fun year, but it really made me miss comics more than anything. Yeah. Uh, and and soon after that was Green Arrow and the Coffin and all sorts of other right. good things. Just briefly on that before we move on to, to Green Arrow and other things. What do you remember the episodes you worked on? Do you like yeah. were there any high points? Oh, really? What's weird, what's weird to me is that I, I, I don't I have no disrespect for that time of my life or that job. But like right. I remember all my comics were like microscopically. And then mm -hmm. my animation work, I'm like, yeah, I think I did the episode that had a big robot in it. I don't, you know, I know I did the ventriloquist episode, the firebug episode of Batman, and wow. then the, and then not all of it. There's a, mm. there's a, there were a team of boarders on every episode. Well, yeah. And I boarded um, the Kyle Rayner Green Lantern episode of Superman. Oh, so, cool. you know, nice. just three, just three shows. But it taught me a lot, and it got me ready to go on and work on, on shows like Men in Black and, and Big Guy and Rusty. Can you? Can you? Has anyone ever brought you like a still from one of your episodes? I'm like, can you sign this? Or you were like, what? Whoa. No, that hasn't happened yet. Although somebody, people often ask me if they can buy those boards, and mm. you can't. Those belong to Warner Brothers. Right. Of course. Wow, that's so cool. But God damn them. <laughs> right. Um, but then. Again, you did Green Arrow, and we ta also talked about that. And 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 it's funny because at that time when I had met you, I had only read, I think it was like the first like twenty issues. I'm basically almost done with yeah. the series, and and I was like, my God, you you and Kevin, and then you and Brad Meltzer, and then Judd Winnick. I mean, my God, you guys had such fun with with Oliver Queen, like. Like it was like we're gonna. It's like I just imagine the pitch being we're gonna reinvent the Green Arrow. Okay, yeah. great. Just everything. It was, so. uh, and it was, and I think that's largely due to the editor of that book, Bob Shrek. He he mm -hmm. sort of he sort of walled us off from the rest of the DCU and let us do our thing. And he also sort of laid the runway, um, you know, for how Kevin could bring him back mm -hmm. and how. Um, and each one of those creators had a different sort of approach to Green Arrow, and it was right. fun. To, it was fun to be there with all those writers and sort of see where each of them were coming from. Mm -hmm. And like when Kevin was on, like his dialogue was so funny, and his situations were so inventive. But he was still new to writing comics, right. so it was sort of our job to sort of, I don't want to say coach him up, but to like sort of finesse what he gave us which were a lot like screenplays and turn them right. into functioning comic book pages and then when brad came aboard we were he was brad had already been writing novels mm -hmm. and we thought oh this is kind of like celebrity stunt casting you know brad Meltzer. and right. brad came in and he knew more about the dcu than anybody i've ever met this side of mark wade like he knew the lore backward and forward he was like a super nerd so we didn't have to we didn't have to train him at all like he was training us um right. and then judd winnick was all about like oliver queen the person he was about humanizing that character and sort yeah. of building building out the arrow family as a as an actual family so all those approaches are really rewarding and um and uh i don't know if i was ready or or a able to actually execute that book to the to their expectations but I learned a lot about being a comic book artist and a comic book writer from that time. Yeah. I, and I, I will ask, because again, you, you did so much of it. Did you, were, were there any moments or story arcs that are your favorite that are, that just are like, you're like, it, that's your proud dad moment. You're like, yeah, you're like, yeah. yeah, I mostly it came out of every, I, here's a, here's a, uh, a pro tip for like up and coming writers. Mm -hmm. Anytime you work with an artist, it behooves you to ask them who they want to draw. Um, because that's a really good way to get their best effort. 
and Kevin did that at the beginning of our of our run, mm-hmm. and we requested the demon, and he made oh, sure nice. the demon was yeah. in that first that first arc, and I'm really proud of that. Um, like those demon appearances, that sort of Batman Green Arrow team up versus the demon was a lot of fun for me. Totally. Um, in fact, I tried to buy a page from it. Um, <laughs> there's there was a page of it on the secondary market. I was like, you know what? I really miss that. I'm going to buy it back. And I could not afford it. <laughs> like it went for wow. a lot more than I thought it would go. For. So, um, and then uh, the same thing happened with Brad when he asked us what we wanted to do. And I said, we've got to get Solomon Grundy into the book somehow. Oh, nice. And so yeah. that there was that big Solomon. Because one of my favorite issues of, of um, a comics as a kid, as a reader, was you guys, again, you guys are probably too young to remember, but there was at the beginning of Frank Miller's run on Daredevil, mm-hmm. there's an issue where he fights the Hulk, as right. ludicrous as that sounds. But it's a fantastic story, and it, it really defines the character of Daredevil. Mm-hmm. And I've always had a thing for those real underdog, mismatched superhero fights. And so that Green Arrow versus Solomon Grundy was sort of our homage to that. So yeah, uh, those two those two moments are sort of my favorite. What's what's uh, one of your favorite uh, genres to illustrate? I Just to go um, on with that. Sure, I I think I have a despite like there's sort of an intractable um, cartooniness to my work, but despite that, I think my favorite genre to work in is horror. Um, and like, I, I read your book, The Atheist. Yeah, that that is some good stuff there. Thank you. I Thank could you. see yeah. that as like a, a, a TV show. It almost was. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but um, not to break your heart, but it almost was. Um, but uh, so I have this bent toward um, toward horror stuff, mostly from being exposed to Swamp Thing as a youth. Mm-hmm. That classic, that classic Lynn Wein, Bernie Wrights, and Run a Swamp Thing. Right. sort of was like very foundational to me and so i'm always drawn back to those sort of like heroes who are also monsters so i'm drawn to the hulk i'm drawn to swamp thing man thing the mm-hmm. thing all the things and um yeah so i like right in my wheelhouse is sort of books about monsters mm-hmm. and uh, cool. both as an artist and a writer um so i'm always going to be drawn to that but i love all genres i like superheroes i like you know romance you know, science fiction, all that. You mentioned you guys gave yourself deadlines while doing this. How how do you handle these deadlines now? Like when you go in, how how quick do you have to, when, well, not now, but even when you're on Green Arrow and stuff, how quick are you putting out books that to keep up with a monthly? Yeah, it's a, um, I didn't know it then, but largely it's a, it's a function of youth. Like in my twenties, mm. I was cranking. Like for two reasons. One, you're in your twenties. You're just happy to be in the show, right? Like you don't like you don't have to be motivated. You're just happy to be there, and you want to produce. And also, you don't have like um, like any any decent artist has um, their goals are way way out ahead of what they can accomplish. Like mm-hmm. what you want to do is way out ahead of what your physical skills for, will allow for. But when you're twenty, you you. 24 or whatever, you can't really see that you're falling short. You're just, you're just jumping. You're like, you're jumping from rooftop to rooftop and you're not thinking about the alleys underneath. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you could, I could really crank in the, in my twenties and not really care about what was happening, like what I was leaving in my wake. Uh, But as you get older, you get more contemplative about your work and um, it's almost a trap, but you try to make every, every page you put out, sort of emblematic of your skill set. And um, it's a real tough balancing act to, to like make sure that that page is serving the story and also make sure that it's like serving your reputation as an artist. And that, those were the, not things that entered my mind when I was young. And they're things that do enter my mind in my 50s. You know, I, I, I don't want to just toss off work. And so it, it naturally slows you down. And also when you get... Uh, when you get older, like all nighters suck. (laughs) Like (laughs) all nighters get very, like all nighters turn into next dayers, you know, 
Like if yeah. you go all night, you're done the next day. And that wasn't the case when, you know, when I was 23. So I think that's the difference. No, I definitely hear that. So, um, uh, how, if, oh, oh, oh uh, go for it, Carrie. Oh, I was just going to kind of a random question, but if you could spend a day as any of the characters, the way that you portrayed them, just go out and live their life, mm -hmm. who would you choose? That I have never thought about that. Believe it or not, I have never thought about that. Um, especially since like, you know, the rap on, on superhero comics is they're like, you know, male power fantasies, you know, like we're projecting mm. ourselves into those characters. I've never done that. Like to me, it's always been like the fun is to like read these adventures. Um, I'm like, I'm not a violent person anyway. If I like, listen, if I accidentally cut somebody off in traffic, I think about it for a month. You know, oh, geez. <laughs> like I don't, I don't, I'm not cut out to, you know, uh, to punch anybody out. So it's, it's tough. It's tough for me to put myself in the shoes of those people. It really is. I haven't, I'm not dodging the question. I've just really never thought about that. I mean, that, I'd love to have, interesting. I'd love to have a superhero's body, you know, <laughs> but, uh, for, even for a day, I'm sure my wife would love it too. <laughs> So uh, it, it's awesome to hear that, you know, uh, uh, Brad was such a, a encyclopedia of DC knowledge. And we know Kevin is a huge, you know, comic dork. And hearing you talk about it, you know, your love of comics as well. How were those work sessions? Like, did, did you like, mm. was there any times you like totally go off script and just like, you know, just uh, BS about characters and, you know, your love of comics? Oh, yeah, that happens all the time. Anytime you're working on comics, it's like it's sort of how you know you're in the quote unquote right relationship. If mm -hmm. you can get together and and, you know, talk about the defenders, <laughs> even though you're not even though you're not working on the defenders, you know, <laughs> um, that's how you know you're 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 with somebody who's simpatico. Um, mm -hmm. And in and, and it like I said, that game where we played where we fantasy casted different books with different creators mm -hmm. i mean you know like that happens now even you know where you're like oh wouldn't it be great to see the, you know wouldn't it great to be see to see her over on this and you see him over on this you know um that still happens to this day with with fellow creators so um yeah we would but always when it when it came time to like work on the book i was trying to be really respectful of um, the writer's intent and not try to steer them any one way or another. I mean, I'll, I'll tell them what I'm good at and what I think I can do. Mm -hmm. um, and hope that inspires them to do one thing or another, but I would never try to like sabotage a writer or, you know, like push them one way or another. I won't, right. I'm there to help them get their story across. That's right. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, are you, uh, do you currently read comics for fun or? Oh yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, I, I'm just so behind. I'm like, I, <laughs> like, I'm still halfway through Immortal Hulk. If that tells you how behind I am, finish um, it. It's good. So no, I love it. It's like my favorite mainstream book in forever. And, uh, like I haven't, like I started reading Why the Last Man when the last issue came out. That's and I just read, and then I read the whole thing. That's sort of like the timeline I'm on. I'm that mm -hmm. because. They don't tell you when you're a kid. Like when, like when I was a kid, uh, number one, there wasn't new comic day. There was like whatever day you got to the spinner rack. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but I would get home with those comics, and they would all be read that day. Right. And then like the next day, I would read one, reread one a day. You know, whatever, and really, and really linger over them. Mm -hmm. and, oh. and when you become an adult, it gets harder and harder and harder to like um, to find time to read. But every time I found that I've been in a funk as a creator, I found it's because I wasn't reading, um, not right. just comics, but novels, nonfiction, whatever. Right. Um, I was letting myself get too wrapped up in um, like everyday life. Um, mm -hmm. that, like that affects your work. So like I had to, you have to sort of dip back in to that mm -hmm. pool and get reinvigorated before you can create for other people. Living Phil, you're talking to the right people. <laughs> it, you know, oh, yeah. Yeah, because I read every day. Carrie is like a brainiac 
a whiff of reading. These yeah. two over here are just uh, Drew is, is our hey, what happened in this issue like 15 years ago? Blah <laughs> yeah. blah blah. And, and Carrie just devours books. Oh, like, oh yeah, it's, it's like the business. Freaking friggin matrix for her you know like she's oh, yeah. like neo of comics you know it, it just downloads I, into the I, I know i know kung fu and incredible hulk you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. no and we cool. have this joke because because when she first started becoming affiliated with the show i was recommending better things so now there's this joke that i've made her into a galactus and now i'm her silver mm -hmm. surfer and she's just like to me my surfer bring me other <laughs> world to read and i'm just like I better be getting overtime for this because this is <laughs> like, you know, I'm going to fall off this thing and I'm calling workers comp. Like what the <laughs> hell? Um, no, I, I totally agree. And, and Phil, I, I felt the same way a couple of years ago. I was like, I, I used to love reading. I'm not reading. And then one day I was like, I have to commute into the city. I'm going to start bringing one Stephen King book and see how long you read. And then suddenly I was like, I've read 39. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, it sneaks up it does, and it's and I, and I my friend asked me about that. He's like, "Why do you read as much?" And I was like, "Because reading is like the gym for my mind, man. Yeah. You know, the, like like my body will do one thing, but my mind will stay. Like you got to take care of both, and you will be immaculate. Absolutely, well, you know. Um, so totally, and it's so and I, also so funny you say that as well, um, Phil, because I'm still discovering books." That I remember coming out, and I'm like, shit, I should have got that issue one. Like, yeah. I'm like, God damn, I should have been there, you know. Um, but now I'm I'm I've I've been on like a nineties kick, and these guys can attest. I've been like on a nineties DC kick for the last like two years. And I've read so much and now I was like, I am such a better fan. I know all <laughs> of the characters, I know who did what and what and what and what and what. Like, and that, that helps them because they're like, who the hell did this? And I'm like, oh, it was Phil Hester, Green Arrow, uh, yeah. issue one to issue 45. And they're like, How, what What vital things did you push out of your brain that you could remember all this? And I was like, who needs algebra? Yeah. Some, something's got to go. So Exactly. Something's got to go. So, you know, fuck tr tr trigonometry. You. Like, bye. Like, <laughs> I want to know all the Justice Leagues. Are, are you a big fan of doing comic cons yeah i actually i am um especially at the beginning of con season and then at the end of con season not so much yeah <laughs> i can imagine yeah at the beginning of it i'm uh i'm very eager to get out and see people again and because a lot of times that's the only time i see my friends is that cons? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. my indus industry friends yeah, yeah. um and uh, and it's cool to meet, like, you, you have certain fans, well, I don't want to say fans, certain readers that you meet at certain, at, like, every show, like, once a year. And so, like, if you miss a year, you don't see that reader for a whole year. Mm -hmm. And um, you meet so many people, you meet thousands of people at these conventions, and it's easy for them to sort of fall out of your memory if you don't see them every year. And mm -hmm. so I like to do my regular circuit and then new places and it's cool to see different parts of the country and the world that I wouldn't necessarily see um, without without Comic Cons. And also, it's cool to see, like, just wander Artist Alley and see what what uh, you know kind of talent is out there and, mm -hmm. and new and exciting creators. So yeah, it's it's a really invigorating part of the job. What uh, what's one of your favorite cons to hit up? Um, I love to do uh, little regional shows. So okay. like. Anytime like a small show invites me, I try to do it unless it's just too far away or or they right. can't afford to bring me out. But I would say like my sort of my home con is uh, Planet Comic Con in Kansas City. Uh -huh. um, that's a like a good. It's not a, like a. It's not a gigantic. Well, I mean, it's gigantic. When I started going to cons, like sixty thousand people was unthinkable. For and real, now that's right? like a, that's like a middle sized show now. <laughs> um, but that's. You know, that's about the right size of show for me. Big enough that, like, you can still, like, there's something for everybody, but not so big that you fear for your safety, like New York. Yeah. Um, that's what yeah. I can actually make it to. I, I'm in Lincoln, Nebraska. These guys are oh, all yeah. East, so. I do Nebraska shows all the time. I can't, have we, I can't believe we haven't met. We have shows. Very. <laughs> I, I look for shows and I'm like, we don't have, we have, like, 
three people showing up with their game store merchandise at a con. Well, um, if they do, if they do O Con again this summer in Omaha, mm -hmm. you should you should drive the ninety minutes to. Oh. to come oh, she'll to yeah, like, if they have something like that going on, yeah, I've just when I've checked, like maybe it was just last year, there was just like nothing. That You're was gonna very take your mom to you know, Comic Con this I'm year. Gonna, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna blow your mind, Carrie. Grand Island has a Comic Con. They have Grand more than meth out there. Yeah, well, I mean, it's sort of a combo. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> God damn! Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 Grand it's Island it's is on like year it's six it's of their Comic Con. Nice. Oh wow! Yeah. I didn't oh, know they're. Yeah, they're they're a small. Well, it's a small not, one. It, it, yeah. Oh my it's god. A small one. There's usually about six guests, but um, okay. uh, but Ocon's pretty good. You should try to get out to Ocon if that. Is that yeah, I, that that should be not a problem whatsoever. I just, oh my god. <laughs> I'm sorry, that just broke me, Carrie. That just, well, just then you know what I mean too. I wasn't trying to be. A, no, I know. It's just, it's just like, it's, how matter of fact, like, whoa, wow, G Willers, Mister. There's more than meth out there. Wow, I, I went to, to, I Lincoln's went to got UNK, a super Carney, so it uh, you know you can't spell drunk without UNK, and then right next to it is Grand Island, yeah. where right. Oh my God. wake up a lot. <laughs> yeah, dear God. Lincoln, Lincoln's got a superiority complex vis-a-vis -vis Nebraska, for sure. Yeah, we do. I <laughs> I try not to fall into that though. I I mean I it's kind of accurate, to... but. It, it's it's always I've been, I've been in these places is why I can I'm from Hooper, and I don't know if you see that's people always mispronounce it, but it's like up north of Hooper? Fremont and yeah, Hooper. yeah. No, I I I don't I only live like five hours from you on eighty. Like if I got on eighty right now and drove west, I'd I'd be at your place like three in the morning. Oh boy, she she got... <laughs> yeah, she, yeah, okay. she has she has horror books and Coke Zero. And a cat and a, a squirrel puppet. So, <laughs> lot, lot, lot of pros there. And, and, and <laughs> you, know, you know, it's just not the greatest neighborhood. And, you know, just listen, you did Green Arrow, just bring a sword. You yeah. Know? Yeah. You know, you know, nothing says neighborhood watch like, well, we've got bows and arrows. I was like, well, what does that mean? We're going Star City, kids. <laughs> um, so, um, I don't know if we wanted to do this, Drew. Did we want to talk about Gotham City Year One? Just absolutely. That was a great book. <laughs> no, hold on. No, let's not let's not talk about the book that he worked on with Tom King <laughs> in total noir goodness. No, we're, you know what we're going to do, Leo. We're going to talk about something really obscure. We're going to talk about I don't know the irredeemable Ant Man. We're going to talk about Clerks: The Lost Scene. Um, there you go. You know, we're going to Invincible Universe. We're going to talk about the darkness accursed. Okay. We're going to go off the face. Yeah. You know, like, fuck Green Arrow. Okay. And his little hat, too. Okay. We're going to go on those. No, we're going to talk about this. Come on. <laughs> I'll talk about all that. I don't care. Yeah. I know. I know. Phil, we know you will. Okay. If we could have you on for two hours, we would. Okay. It would be the story of Phil Hester by the comic book deeds. <laughs> and um, but we only have an hour and we got to make time as essence. But I just want to say, Phil, we are huge Tom King fans and yeah. on this show. And this, holy crap, this was awesome. Yeah, it was. Like, yeah, I, I, I'm, did you, I'm gonna... how, how did you guys all read the, the, the narration where, like, I sat there and I was totally in noir style in my head, just, yeah. It was a dark and stormy <laughs> night. <laughs> I, 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 okay, Jeremy, I'm not going to lie to you. At one point during it, I had to put on some jazz and I was like, where did oh, my, because yeah. I had a, I had a fedora phase in college where I dressed like it was the 20s <laughs> and I would go to parties like that. And my friend took a photo of me there and I was talking to my friends and <laughs> she captured it, Drew looking for a gun mall. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and, and so the whole time I was like with Fedora, I was like, it was a dark and stormy night. The kind in Gotham that you just feel in your bones. Yeah. You know? Um, no, but it, it, yeah, Jeremy, I, I had to put the jazz on. I had to, you know, self-narrate. I had to put my fake cigarette in. I was just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. it was a, it's the tough thing. I mean, not tough thing, but the the thing that was tough for us to nail about all this is that it was it sort of it's sort of post noir timeline wise. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's like 1960, so it's not right. like the heyday of of noir entertainment has come and gone, and it's sort of like starting to hedge into sort of the Mad Men era, right? And so us, you know, we had to find that sort of um, middle ground between hearkening back to those like you know the the Roaring Twenties and the you know the Thirties and Prohibition era, mm-hmm. uh, but also like picking up on that mid century modern stuff that was actually going on at that time. Yeah. And and so, I, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, I was gonna say like just the way you use shadows just so complemented the story. Like just it's like, like art inside of art. art. Yeah. yeah, the shadows in a negative space. Oh my god, so perfect. Absolutely, the ambiance was great. And uh, and what I love is that I think the fact that this is being told by our our primary character. Um, on his deathbed to the who we know the Batman, like I was right. just like, holy fucking shit! This just like I, I felt like I was watching Community again, and Troy's like, this is wrinkling my brain, and I'm reading the page like, this is gonna wrinkle your brain. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, like, it's very, it's very, it's a very deft piece of writing. Um, it's um, what you're seeing sort of on panel is often really brutal and over the top. Mm-hmm. Like, like sort of the machinations that are going on are very like very disciplined and very subtle on Tom's part. He's mm-hmm. he's giving you the not only the origin of Gotham City, but he's he's like fundamentally rewriting the origin of Batman. Oh, absolutely. Without erasing anything about what we already know about Batman, which is a pretty tough trick to pull off. Absolutely. Like to, to make a fundamental change without backtracking on anything. Is mm-hmm. it, it takes a it takes a lot of discipline and a lot of subtlety, and Tom really brought it to bear on the story. Well, Carrie, didn't you have a you had a question, right? Did you? We, we were talking about this. Did you have a question about the ending? <clears throat> oh, I'm sure we all have a as question about the ending. Yeah, yeah. As, as he's telling him about it, and he's kind of like, "Well, you know, that's great. Why are you telling me this?" When he has the there, there's the fling that goes on, and the way that he is drawn, it, like there, there's a bit of a resemblance there between uh, Slam and Bruce Wayne. And are we supposed to take that perhaps he's telling him this because he's his grandfather? Well, <laughs> well uh, uh, spoiler, I guess. But I'm gonna spoil. Yeah, here's a spoiler alert. So if you don't want to have this book spoiled for you, it's time to tune out. Mm-hmm. Um, Hold on. I'm good. Okay. No, I don't so, care. <laughs> okay. It's, it's clear, like in the first issue of the book, Constance Wayne says she hasn't shared a bedroom with her husband for months. Mm-hmm. And you know that uh, Slam and Constance have an affair, or a, a one-night stand right. toward the, you know, about three quarters of the way through the book. So there's a lot, you know. I mean, you can fill in the blanks, um, mm. or if if you if you can't wrap your mind around that, you can let it go. <laughs> right. But it's it's the intent of us. It's our intent that yes, Batman is that Slam Bradley's Batman's grandpa. Okay. Oh my God. Yeah. Like I was, gonna, I can't have been the only person that was Whoa. like. Oh, no, we just didn't. So we did just didn't say. Yeah. You know. Since you're, you know, like nobody oh. said, well, you're since you're his grand, you know, Thomas right. Wayne's well, yeah. But yeah. And that gets yeah, him. they don't. It's totally. it's clear that Constance um, doesn't have a relationship with Richard, you know, at the time oh. that Thomas was sired, uh, but she was with with huh. Sam. So yeah. read, okay, read what you will into that. Um, it, that kind of gives it. The, it's like you get the Wayne part of. Gotham, as well as now the underbelly of Gotham, I guess would be yeah. on the other side of Gotham, combining yeah. into the Batman. Yeah, history. And, and to me, there's an even better, more subtle moment toward the end of the book, where um, set during sort of uh, Slam Bradley's uh, Jim Rockford phase, like in the '70s, right? And mm-hmm. Constance comes to him and says, "Look, Thomas is a great kid, but he's a little naive." 
and I need you to show him how these streets work. And Slam goes, you know what? No offense, but I don't want to have anything more to do with your family. <laughs> you know, right. you're on your own. After you, I don't know. Reason. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and that was such a noir moment ending too. It's like, I don't know a damn thing about this. Yeah. And and I'm just like, it's damn. also the origin of Batman. Because mm. had he taken Thomas around and taught him about the streets, he wouldn't have gone down Crime Alley with his family at night. Right. Yeah. And can, I, I want to point out one thing that I picked up on that I absolutely loved, and and this is to credit to Tom, but I'm sure you also enjoyed it as well. That the streets were named after oh, famous yeah. oh. on Batman. Like I lost my mind. I was like, wait a second. Yeah. Oh, and like I, Adams I, is in there. Uh, yeah, Giordano. Yeah, Tom can't uh, resist that. He loves that. Yeah, and like for me especially, like I think it was like uh, Robinson was on there, and I was like, yes, yeah. thank you, James Robinson's work on Batman. Um, Jerry. Yeah. Oh, Jer I'm sorry, Jerry Robinson. Uh, my my apologies. I'm just my brain yeah, is cool. scrambling. Names. Just, no, but Jerry. Yeah, Jerry Robinson, but like Adams and just like Giordano, like all of them, and I was just like, and Carrie even brought that up. She was like. Is there a map? Can we like mark what street is which? Like, God, oh, like a maze of creators. I'm like, Batman has been around a long fucking time. Like, yeah, you know, um, yeah. Well, on, details. on a similar note, I mean, like you, you, you have a uh, cane in here in the background. Uh, did you hide like a finger in there as well somewhere that we missed? <laughs> no, I don't think I did. It's okay. very, it's very like. Um, I mean, I love Bill Finger, mm -hmm. uh, but it's a very like sort of, I don't even remember doing that. I see it now. I don't remember doing it. <laughs> uh, and the, the, uh, owls, uh, I'm assuming that's with reference of like the court of owls. Yeah. It's just yeah. a little, a little nod to that. Love it. Yeah. But yeah. And we were, and we were, um, you know, when we were getting to the point where we were talking about Batman's lineage being sort of, uh, excavated by this book and i was like man you couldn't get away with this in the dcu and he was like phil this is canon this isn't black label you see a black label in the front of this book and i'm like no and he's like this happens i'm like wow okay <laughs> hey, there that's you go, gotta phil. be something to be like oh wow i i, I now can contributed to the mythos that's just cool. like Oh yeah. yeah, that's awesome, right? You filled in the gaps, man. Like not me. That's Tom. Like I don't have the juice to. I I don't have the juice to mess with Batman's origin. Believe me. Well, those are, but you still contributed. I mean, you still, yeah, no, you're I still was, there. You I know. was happy to be there. I was happy to be there. Yeah, but no, it's a whole thing was just amazing, and it's actually funny because I have a one of my best friends. We have this tradition every year. Uh, for her for Christmas, I always get her a Batman book. So she has like this huge collection because we've been friends for over like almost 20 years now. And she's just like, thank you for my Batman. I was like, you're welcome every year. It's easy. But I, I'm always like, what's the story this year? And I read this. I was like, thank you, universe. This is yeah. great. So, well, you know, Tom's around and Tom is going to keep cranking out like evergreen, awesome Batman books, I think, as long as he's at DC. Absolutely. Like we we loved his one what was it one bad day book that, that he was, did. Oh my god! Oh my yeah. god! Yeah, that that was the Riddler, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. It, it was the best one of the bunch. I mean, it, it's it's. And Carrie read all of them, so yes, it's true. Yeah, and, I, and like, <laughs> I thought they were all great, but that really was sort of the crown jewel. Yeah, and mm -hmm. uh, I I even love his his. I know he gets a bad rap for it, but his run on you know uh, uh, of Batman. Um, you know, uh, people, I don't know why his run was so him. good. Yeah, it was. It was, well, it was because because he was following up Snyder and Capullo, and that's just a tall that's a tall order to do. I, I I would say yeah, I was a little disappointed when I heard Snyder and Capullo were were leaving, but but he him and uh, it was James Tinian, right? That he went on. Yeah, uh, yeah. James Tinian was after Tom King. Yes. Yeah. Yep. James came after. Yeah, but I mean, Tom King just to kick it off with, you know, with that plane crashing and, you know, Bruce saying, you know, asking Alfred, you know, would my parents be proud? Is this a good death? Mm. You know, it's just. Well, uh, you know what it is? I 
person like I don't mind his Batman, but I also think that I like it when he does his own com- his own creator stuff. Like we all love Mister Miracle. We read that book. We loved that book, and that we told great. him in person at Cri- at Trivicon this year that we all reviewed and loved it. He was just he was like, oh, thanks, man. He's so he's. Yeah. I won't say that's the one thing I like, regardless of of, of 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 any circumstances or how you feel. Like again, yeah, not every book every creator does is 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 top notch there's everyone's allowed to be like you know i thought that was okay and i'm like that's fine that's your opinion that's why they do so much because yeah. there's something for everybody you know um and, and if you'd only did the kind of books you knew you could nail you would be you would be digging yourself the deepest rut as a creator exactly you've got, you've got to try things that you don't know if you can pull off yeah um, you got to take risks did yeah you, just did you have to say engaged. that did you, you have know. to say to Tom at any point, hey, Slam's been beat up every which way in this book? You know. I don't know if I can have him beat up again. Well, if you have the hardcover, um, there's a thing in the back of the hardcover where you could see we kept a visual log of oh how, God. how his face gets torn up from issue to issue. Just oh, yeah. so we don't. And like we did lose track. Like there were times I had to go back and fix like which eye was black and which, you know. <laughs> Which eyebrow had a you know bandage over it? You know, mm-hmm. it's, um, yeah, we had to we had to really follow that and keep track. That's funny. Yeah, it was just like I said, it's just everything. But and it's funny because we're at one point we're planning on doing a live reading of one of his books, the Batman Elmer Fudd crossover. Oh yeah. Um, and and Carrie had actually commented he did another uh, live stream with a, with a friend of ours, and she told him about it. He's like, oh wow, that's great! Like cool! Like let me know how that goes. And we're like, I'm sorry, what? You, 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 <laughs> no, you he, think, yeah, he loves that. He just he didn't know about. Did you know that Neil Adams did a live reading of that? He book? had no idea. And Tom didn't know about it. Um, and Tom found out about it. And he was like thrilled with it. Oh, absolutely. Oh, I didn't know that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I love you the tarot cards too. By the way, that yeah, that nice was so, so like crazy. Comment on those. Yeah, she yeah, could. Yeah, she, she couldn't it handle it. Up, oh, uh, what was that, Carrie? I I said you should do a tarot deck. I I would love one. Oh, yo, I, that I, would be amazing. I I lived. Uh, I've been doing this so long. I did contribute. Caliber Comics did a tarot deck, like in the late eighties, early nineties, and uh-huh. it's got all these yeah. like creators that blow up later like jill thompson's in it vince Locke, guy davis like all the people that were i'm in it jim o'barr like all these people that were bumping around caliber at mm-hmm. the time mm-hmm. i think even bendis might have done one too but oh, we wow. all we all contributed a card to the caliber tarot deck nice that i gotta pick i gotta see if i can find one at a decent price <laughs> yeah good luck yeah. <laughs> thank you sir yeah. <laughs> i'll be on my way now uh, uh, that's just beautiful work. I'm sorry, I was caught up. Yeah. In well, ju- I mean, this going by. In my opinion, the star of the book is is Jordi Belair, um, because her colors are just like really outside of the box. And she asked us like how we wanted to tackle that at the beginning of the book. She was like, "How far out can I get with this?" And I was like, "Go, go all the way. Like, be as nice. nutty as you want to be." And um, our editor had to rein her in a few times because, like, she really went like, like to undiscovered country. Um, mm-hmm. There are several there are several pages in the books that she just wanted to leave completely black and white. Mm-hmm. Um, and I agreed with her. I was like, "Yeah, let's have some black and white pages." And the editor's like, "We can't do that. <laughs> we got to have at least some gray tones on that page." So, like, here's the closest we got right here. Um, That's great. And, and that is the page yeah. that. People try to buy from me the most is that I can imagine page, the page in the junkyard. And it's the page where she just went all out and is like, you know what? This is going to be this part of it is going to be black and white. And um, it was beautiful choice. Yeah, she's very yeah. gutsy creator. And I'm I feel like I was really lucky to have her like I'm not um, I've worked with a lot of great colorists, um, but I don't think a lot of my own work. I have a hard time looking at my work. Like you're torturing me right now. Um, no. But we're um, sorry. 
<laughs> but we're, 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 what, what does that mean? Is, what is, if, Jeremy, what's the slang? Is that good or bad? <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of like think it's slang. <laughs> it's you know slang. How, you know how Adam Driver gets pissed off when you make him watch clips of his movies. That's oh no, oh. Leo, cut the cut the feed. But I told Jordy like um, her um, and I in all this talk, I don't want to overlook Eric Gapster, who is the anchor who oh, has been working mm. with me forever and like really nailed all like the high contrast aspects of this book that I wanted to get over. Um, but Jordy, um, uh, I told her like when I'm asked to proof a book, it, I hate it. I get nauseated because I have to look at my work again. Mm. But when she had colored it, I could get over that because I was just looking at her colors the whole time. And like that, th those were enough to like sort of transform my work, like elevate well, my work. Yeah. But also I was going to say, colors yeah, it took can me totally out of change my, a whole picture. It, it took me out of myself, you know, and yeah. I, could, I could be objective about what the way the book looked. So, so, um, when you have that issue, so you're you're looking at your your artwork. Are you thinking that oh crap, I should have done this or I could yeah. have done? Well, that that's you know, um, I I find that's that's the true you know sense of, of a creative like yourself. You know, just looking back at your your own work and and you know, you do totally friggin' incredible work, but you know, it's you always think that hey, it could have been better. You know, yeah, I. I find that I need about a, like a, a six year, <laughs> a six year window. Like if I look at something that's really old, I tend to think, you know what? Not as oh. bad as I remember or not bad for a kid or whatever. Right. Uh, and I keep having this idea that like my work is only counting when I say it counts. So like, uh -huh. oh, don't look at anything I did before I was 50 or, you know, and that's, that's silly because there's all sorts of work I did at different points in my career. Like I did Swamp Thing in my 20s. I did Green Arrow in my 30s. You know, all this um, all this work, that means a lot to a lot of people. And I've got really fight. I got to fight the urge to like be self-deprecating about that work because that work means something to somebody. And I don't want to undercut their experience and the value they took out of it. So I there's this little war going on in my head between like the Midwestern urge to self-deprecate uh -huh. and, and like oh, yeah. respecting people's opinion about your work. Cause once it's off your table, it belongs to the reader. It's, it's theirs. And um, I've had that lesson pounded into me over and over again by really poignant moments um, as a creator, like people have come up to me and tell me what things mean to me, what books I've done in my life mean to them. And like, I, I've got to fight that urge to go, oh, that old thing, because well, it did mean something to them. Like they read it when they were like when they left home for the first time or right. they read it when they lost a spouse or whatever. And it helped them like work through something. And so I've got to I've got to really make an effort to just like when somebody like compliments you about your work, you just say thank you. You know, that's all you really have to say. That's true. Well, Midwesterners all have a huge amount of imposter syndrome yeah. and apologizing. We're always sorry. Oh, I sorry. Yes. Sorry. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Yes, you do. It's in our DNA. It's in the water. We can't help it. Yeah, but so but we go one, on road trips like that. So one of the last questions we have is because we're I think we're almost wrapping up our time. Is that you've been to a lot of cons and you know. Have you seen people cosplay as your characters and, yes. and 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 what's that like for you? Are you are you are you similar? Are you excited? Are you horrified? Or do you yes. take photos with them as much as they take photos of you and things like that? Like what's I, what's I that try, like? okay? Listen, there's this yes, fine line I have to walk and not to like not be a creep, and I don't want to be that person that's like like lining up girls for specific shots and like. Mm -hmm you know um but the funniest one and like could have been the potentially creepiest one was um i was going to san diego mm -hmm. um during the green arrow years and this is back when san diego was was not quite as busy as it is now so you could actually have a cab drop you off in front of the convention center oh, wow wow and 
I got in a cab at the airport and I was late and I was like, I need to go straight to my table. So I had them drop me off at the convention center, no hotel. Mm -hmm. And the very first human being I see is a uh, Mia Dearden as speedy oh. cosplayer. She's wow. like, she is in front of my cab when I get out. Right. And like, I'm paralyzed because what can you do? Like, I can't jump out of a cab and say, I created you. Like, and not come off as like a, a total freak. So I just like, you know, I gave her a thumbs up and kept moving, <laughs> you know. But yeah, that was like a real kind of like surreal moment to see like the very first thing you see at a San Diego Comic-Con is a, a costume you designed. And it's like, a, it was like a moment like... Um, you always look for those moments that sort of like you pluck a string and it reverberates back to like when you were 12 or 13. Mm -hmm. like, well, yeah, this is a string I'm going to pluck oh. for this, for this oh. kid who's drawing Captain Squatty Body when he's 12. You know, that like one day one of these superhero costumes you doodle is, you know, is going to be like worn by somebody at Comic-Con, you know? Yeah. Or, or something, or some like half ass character you created it's going to wind up like in a Marvel movie or a DC movie, like, or a show, like millions of people are going to see it and never know you made it up, but still yeah. it's cool. You know, I, I will say that I'm still annoyed that I couldn't find my onomatopoeia mask. Cause I was dying when you were finally at a uh, terrific con, but I will say this. And I did have a friend of mine uh, who we had on the show at one point, um, Franco. Um, we oh, yeah. had, yeah, we had this tradition, me and my girlfriend, um, whenever our costumes weren't official until we got a commission from him to do it. And he did actually draw me as Automatopoeia. And I oh, thought wow. he would really appreciate it. Oh, that's so cute. There you go. And there it's tough to say Automatopoeia is cute, but that looks yeah. awesome. Because yeah, Franco can make anything cute. Absolutely. So he just, I was just there and he was just like, that's, that's the speech bubble guy, right? I'm like, yeah. And I was like, all right, come back in an hour. <laughs> and he just awesome. draws this. And I was just like, perfect and i well, just we're, I, we're yeah. sort of full circle because i just drew a, a guest issue of of green arrow green arrow number eight of the current That's volume funny. and it's a just a big like an issue long onomatopoeia fight between connor hawk and and uh onomatopoeia so perfect. yeah it was like old home week <laughs> yeah That's pretty cool yeah, one day one day we'll see him it'll be great one day well one day. i, I I know we are at the hour mark, so we'll uh, we'll let you go, Phil. Um, before we do, though, where do you like people interacting with you on uh, social media? I'm on both Twitter and Blue Sky as Phil Hester, and um, I'm pretty easy to find. And I try to, um, even if I'm not following you, I'll try to respond to direct messages. True story. Very cool. I, uh, so if, you I just... really, if you really need me, just DM me. Well, Blue Sky <laughs> doesn't have DMs, but DM me on Twitter. Very and cool. I do have a, I do have a fan page on Facebook. I don't run it, but um, a friend of mine runs it. So if you absolutely, if you're desperate to get a hold of me, you can reach out through that Facebook page, and it will get to me. Got it. Working on that. I mean, what? Okay. Keep, keep your signal. Yeah, uh, and yes. I, I just got on Blue Sky myself. I, I might be following you already. If not, I'll be following you today. Yeah. Well, holler, holler at me, and I'll follow you back. Cool beans. Awesome. Well, uh, we'll let you go, Phil. Thank you so much. And um, like, uh, just a reminder, you hit the leave studio on the bottom there, and then it'll pop you into an uploads page. And then once that's 100%, you're good. Don't touch anything until it's 100%. Yep, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. oh, well, hands, hands, go to hands. Oh. <laughs> that's, well, my, well. that's my motto in life. And right here, right here, high, high five. Awesome. <laughs> well, All right, very guys. much. Thank you so much, um, Phil. Much appreciated. I'd be I'd be back anytime if you wanted me. Oh, uh, thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, we, uh, I still got another page of that. questions. <laughs> yeah, I can do a two parter sometime. <laughs> yeah, awesome. I'll be back right. anytime. Thank you, you so know, much. Oh, you know what? I, I have a yeah. bigger thing coming up later in the year if you want to talk about that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh what's that? Well, uh, what what time should we or roughly around? I don't know. It's not on the schedule yet at DC, but. Um, You'll know about it when it happens. It'll, there'll be an announcement for it. So. I handle the news for the show. Yes, I will. We got you. Okay. Awesome. awesome. Cool. All right. Thanks, Phil. You have a good night. Good night, guys. Good night. Nice to meet you. That was great. Yeah. He's well. still here. Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, he...
at least uh, you heard. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so uh, everybody, stay tuned. Uh, still watch them. We got plenty of show left. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, we'll be back in thirty six seconds. Rise and shine, my sinners. When Father Evil starts his day, he gets a little deadly. Deadly grounds coffee has the richest, smoothest flavor you'll find anywhere. It's sinfully delicious. Once you go deadly, you never go back. Order yours at getdeadly.com. Coffee's so good, <laughs> it's scary. Fucking hell. I just saw Carrie's message. Yeah, we'll get it next time. Oh my god. I have an idea for that. Let's just talk about it afterwards, because I have an idea for it. Okay. Uh, We're talking about it afterwards, Leo. Okay. okay, but real quick, uh, Joe had asked earlier if we do shows in Denver. Uh, these guys are all on the East Coast. I'm the only person really in the Midwest. So, and I can't drive. I have epilepsy. So are you saying you're the odd woman? Are you saying you're the odd woman out? Well, I'm just saying that you guys are more than likely not going to be showing up in Denver for a con. So, not I, I would be the, you know what? Listen, can you not, can you not assume I can't drive there? Don't tell don't tell the universe to put up those roadblocks. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe 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 we, we find a duffel bag full of cash and decide to invest in the dorking. One we year have... we go to Colorado Comic Con. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you know, we buy Leo kind of house, thing. It might and then we that. go, you know, whatever works, but whatever. All right. Yeah. I'm not saying never, I'm just saying I had so it, many more questions for Phil. Well, of course you did. Of course you did, Stretchy Olson. You know, you know. I mean, let me, show me the show us the notepad. How many more did you have? Oh, uh, I, I only had two pages, but like you can see what I crossed out. Oh, maybe you can't see what I crossed out. <laughs> My God, you you are you are on this a page here. My God, man, uh, he'll be I, back. I, I try, I try. I know. But he was so great. He's he's so friendly. Oh yeah, he's a good storyteller. I like it. I like it. He taught me about Ocon and that Grand Island has a con. Yeah, yeah not just that. Yeah, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that was so fucking funny. Like that. I'm sorry, Carrie. That broke me for a minute. Like I was just like, you're welcome. I'm proud. Um, Leo, so before we get to the news, Leo, what are you watching now when you sleep? Uh, when I sleep, when you before you sleep, buddy, uh, like well, I, I, I know this is totally ridiculous, but I fall asleep to um, uh, ancient aliens that like puts me to sleep. The the guy with the the the, yeah. the, the hair to the aliens, yes, Giorgio Sukulus. Oh, god, he even knows the name. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, yeah. Uh but other than that, um Aquaman came out today, so I'll be watching that. Okay. Yeah. Um oh, nice. My wife and I were watching Mad Men. Um loving that show. I uh, I, I think I heard that that minus one is back in theaters and I need to see it. Yeah, it, it's uh you can also find it on Pluther, uh the black and white version. Yes! Oh my God! Are you serious? Yes. Yes. It, I've been dying to watch that. Oh, it's so good, so good. Yeah. I, I mean, I want to see in color, but I feel like black and white is such a beautiful homage to the original Gojira, and I'm just like, yes. Oh, uh, I did read um, the next King Kong, uh, next Godzilla That's King cool. Kong. They will be replicating the famous uh, kick. His air kick, where he slides oh. on the tail. Okay, nice. You, you yeah, see, the thing is, moment. see, the thing what I liked is that when you see in the new trailer for the new movie, you see them both running together, and yeah. I'm just like, this is how we start the Monster Avengers. <laughs> I just don't understand where they got the tech to build him a a, a gauntlet for his broken hand. Uh, did you watch Monarch? I did. Okay. Where, 
did they say where they built the gauntlet? No, but Monarch. I, really... I know about Middle Earth and all that. So. Alien. Yes, but what happens in Middle, Middle Earth? Earth. <laughs> uh, I don't know fully. Oh, Time stands still. What's her name was there for a while. Yeah, but I, I mean, guess so. yeah, but it, it could be Monarch could be way in the future. So mm. it, who knows? We'll find what, out. What, Tell I, me more. Actually, Jeremy, I speak Leo. What that means is shut the hell up and watch the goddamn show. <laughs> <laughs> I did watch the goddamn show. It's all over. All right, cool. There it you go. Good. Then, good. Then don't be. A, then then save it for your blog. I did have uh, trouble during the Japanese speaking parts because there there was no reading for me. There the they didn't have the subtitles for it. Oh, okay. Huh? Yeah, there wasn't subtitles on it. There should have been when I when I watched part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Guys. Guys, save it for after the show. We're burning. We're burning. So, what about everybody else? So what are you, anybody watching anything dorky? I'm not watching. I'm just doing a lot, a lot of reading. Okay. Well, you have I've four been... days to make up for of, of nothing because you got snowed in misery style. Yeah. So I just I, finished I, I... watching. Oh. Oh no! You I, go ahead. I like. I... I used the hotspot for enough time to download a bunch of books onto my Kindle and was going through like two novels a day and then everything else. You're, you're Neo. That's what it is. Carrie, you're Neo. She plugs. No, she's not. <laughs> not uh, oh, I, I can, Neo. I did. She retains it all. She is. <laughs> uh, just real Thank quick. Uh, I know, Jar Jar, you had something, but uh, I just also rewatched the Marvels. How was it? Oh, I watched that. That yeah. was pretty good. Yeah, I I saw it in the theater. I enjoyed it. Wasn't it. Bad. Just, yeah, it was. It was. Good. You know, you know, I I I get annoyed because, again, I do the news and I get annoyed because so much is spoiled by me just researching, because people mm -hmm. just cannot help themselves. Like I already know about the end credit scene from it, the Marvels, and I'm like, okay. But at the same time, do we have to do this like two weeks before, like after the movie had been released? You know, like I understand nerd journalism. You want to get ahead of the news. Yeah. You know, but it's just like, man, working in new ger nerd journalism has its drawbacks, man. Hmm. You lose, you lose the joy. Yeah. yeah, I get messages from them like, okay, this comic came out. Read it now because if you look at the news, you're going to get spoilers first. So go go read the comic, then go check. Hey. I excuse and me. I appreciate you know, that. Listen, you would have been mad at stuff from Ultimate Spider-Man got ruined, spoiled before you read it. You know that. Okay, I don't regret sending you that message. Okay. No, I I appreciate it. That's why I'm, I I wasn't oh, I, I wasn't good. saying that you're bad. I'm like, thank you. Okay. Yeah. You're so bad. You're good. <laughs> like I don't know. Blood. <laughs> oh God. So I bad. You know what's funny? I always imagined some. I wanted to see a Thanos at a con, but wearing the power glove, and then had the Infinity Gauntlet. I was like, "Oh no, someone found a way to do it." I wonder if they—that's got to have been done, right? Right? I don't know, man. I've, I've seen a lot. I've never seen a Thanos with a power glove. I definitely can't. I can picture it in my well, head, but I, I definitely haven't. can't say that I've seen it. And I, especially with Infinity Gems on it, I'd be like, "I'm sorry." Yeah. Now the power glove is too powerful. What? You see, him have those fingers. Tom Dog says Spider Man Across the Spider Verse has been nominated for an Oscar for Best Animated Film. So is Godzilla, right? Not for Best Animated Film, but for like. Uh, Godzilla was nominated, but uh, TMNT wasn't for some reason. Yeah. It's a great, it was a great style. Yeah. Yeah. But... All right. What about Hellboy with an Infinity Gauntlet. He's already. He's got a right. He's got the right hand of doom. He brings. It brings the I end know, of the world. It'd be fun. He actually. Did everybody watch What If Volume Two? No. No. Okay, there you go. Something I need to watch. Okay. Yeah, All but right, they, apparently the most powerful Marvel character was Squirrel Girl. No. Damn it. No, it was um. Uh, mm. A certain character, uh, super Leo. powerful character. Leo. Yes. What did I say about spoilers? Keep I, it to yourself. I'm, I'm, I, I'm 
trying to remain uh, nameless. All right. Cool. But it's a certain character wearing the infinity suit with an I think an infinity gauntlet. No, infinity suit. Okay. Thor's hammer. It's like all the most powerful weapons in the MCU. Okay, they are like scroll. The <laughs> they Leo, go straight super <laughs> scroll. Leo. Yes. I just want to say this, and I mean this with all honesty. Sometimes you make it really hard to love you. <laughs> okay. You can do like okay, cap shield. Okay, like I'm, I'm like I, like I feel what like I'm not all of a sudden like Frank. I'm here. Uh, I'm here right now. Well, it was part of the discussion. It's, it's a powerful character. It's apparently, the most powerful Marvel character ever designed. Okay. You're, <laughs> Leo, you're on time. Uh, you're on timeout. But it's time out. Oh well, if I'm in timeout, then uh, I can do this. Touche. <laughs> All right. Well, well, it's funny because lately there haven't really been a lot of variants. It's more like variant watch has now become cover watch. But whatever. Are you, are you kidding me? Wait for this week. Extra <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I put. Uh, so I'm trying to do I've been some yeah i've been yeah i've been trying to do more videos for our youtube and i pulled all the variants just from marvel and dc this week mm -hmm. holy fuck shit ton absolute shit ton of covers all right cool so then start the show huh okay i'm gonna need a little bit of help with this drew uh but okay. so uh let's see how many Oh, so this is just one. Uh, Kid Venom number one, covered by Ty Gami, is revealed. Cool. It looks pretty dope, not going to lie. Yeah. Yeah. I need a second screen to look at. You're so good at this, Leo. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Why are you uh, apologizing? I, I don't have the info yeah. on this, though. I apologize. But Leo, trust me, we've covered it enough. There. Oh, wow. These are all okay. So this one I can help you with a little bit. DC released all the covers for Justice League versus Godzilla versus Kong issue seven, all of them, and they are beautiful. I love that one. That is so. Cool. I believe that might be the. It that's a wait a second. That's a Dan. That's a Dan Mora cover. Look at that Mecha Godzilla man. Hmm. Uh, Must be pivotal uh, to the story because there's another one. Thank you, D thank you. Cover version of DJ Khaled. How do you want it? Much you want to bet that that so, one is is the hardcover because they did say they released news the cut that among these is the is the purported hardcover cover. She had a oh little, wow little nose in that one. Wonder Woman did, but yeah. yeah. Wow, that's cool, man. That okay, that's got to be the hardcover. Yeah, look at that. That is beautiful. Dan Mora, man, he is just killing it lately. That man could do no wrong. Yeah, uh, I, I'm my apologies. I slacked this. If week. anybody's not reading it, they should be. This is great. The issue four yeah. was, was actually surprisingly decent. Very cool. Uh, and uh, next up, we have Ghost Machine. Yo. So, uh, this is going to be covered by Gary Frank and Brad Anderson. Mm -hmm. And then Look we have that. this that is the same foil cover version. is also going to be Geiger. Oh, no. No, the one oh, oh. before that they didn't show, they didn't include the foil version in the list of them. So it's, I think there will be a foil version of this particular one. Mm -hmm. Got it. Then, got it. Yeah, so that's A and B. And then here, here we go to cover C. Yeah, C, this is also Gary Frank and Brad Anderson. Yeah, look at that Geiger. That's a great one. Yeah. And we have Brian Hitch and Brad Anderson. Red coat. Nice. Yeah, that one sounds great. Okay. E, oh, Jason Fabok and Brad Anderson. Hmm. That's going to be a fun storyline, too. Yeah. I, I love Jason Fabok's artwork. 
He's he's such a pleasant guy too. He's been at Terrific Con once or twice. I'm surprised you didn't get to meet him. Yeah. Uh this looks like a fun one. Francis Manipol. Oh yeah, the the Rock the, the Rockefellers, yeah. And uh covered G's Jason Fabok and Brad Anderson again. Okay. Cool. Cover H is Peter Snageberg. 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 Yeah, he's he's uh, being hello. Yeah. This looks like fun. That I think we talked about this before. Yeah, this is Peter Tomasi. Yeah, this is Peter yeah. Tomasi and uh, um, Mr. Snageberg are working together again. And this, oh yeah. One is the son of a devil. One is the one is the son of an angel. The other one is the daughter of the devil, and they become friends. Aw, And Ivan Rice, Danny, Mickey, and Brad Anderson. Yo, this looks familiar too. This, Absolutely, this story looks like fun. Oh yeah, Carrie was a big fan of this one because this is like because they did a cover of this which regular, and then the other one is a horror cover. Yeah, so here's yeah. the horror one. Wow! That's what I'm asking yeah. for for my LCS because I found I I asked for them. I I told you guys this before. I asked for them uh, like a month or so ago, and then they just got a hold of me today, and they were like, "Yeah, so apparently people have ordered like we have three people that have ordered every single cover, so don't have everything left for you." But uh, check eBay. A lot of times you can uh, get a pre-order on eBay. That's true. Mm. That, yeah. that's well, they said they'd order one for me if I. Okay. Okay. I just since we broadly on next week, I wanted to get one. So I... oh. oh, you don't want to get second print, so yeah. No, 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 you want to keep them first print babies and get them before they drop. Before second they printing is for quitters, man, and there's no quitters here. Or once these drop, some of these are gonna. Yeah, they're gonna go up. They go crazy. Oh heck yeah! Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that's Jason Faybach again, and then uh, the last one. Uh, this is very cool. Ivan Rice. Right. Yeah. And if you read all the different ads on that and it it's it's just cool as shit. Like they all have references into what's gonna be in the stories and stuff, and I really I really enjoy that one. That's awesome. All right. So Ghost Machine, everybody. And we're super pumped because we're gonna have somebody from Ghost Machine on next week's show, but more on that later. Woohoo! Next week. Yeah. We got a lot with guys. We're I'm busy. not going to shoot my own horn, everybody, but we've been working hard. We already got half of our February booked and we're working on getting the rest done. But you all thought this month was great. Next week, gonna, next month's going to be crazy. Crazy. Okay. I'm already tired. Uh, okay. Well, we'll uh, we'll speed things up here because we were going to try to keep it for an hour and a half. But that... We got eight minutes, Leo. Uh, <laughs> we can no way. Check your clock. Well, okay, whatever. Move on. Uh, okay, so we will move on to news, and uh, doom, looks doom, like doom, uh, doom. Jar Jar is up. Jar Jar is first with Venom. Okay, so it's imagine if other Marvel superheroes had formed a bond with Venom symbiote. In the years following the fusion of a dark alien entity with Spider-Man, various hosts like Eddie Brock, Mac Gargan, Scorpion, Flash Thompson, Agent Venom, have experienced this symbiotic, symbiotic connection. Uh -huh. Additionally, a venom bomb once spread across New York, affecting heroes like the Avengers, Echo, and Wolverine. But right. what if these symbiotic bonds were never severed? This question is explored in the new limited series, What If Venom, written by Jeremy Holt and illustrated by Jesus Har Havas. Harvas? Sounds about right. Yeah. Um, Tatum Gayodu, Manuel Garcia, mm -hmm. uh, D. D. Jonas Neves, and the series delves into the scenario of Venom symbiote taking possession of Doctor Strange, Loki, Wolverine, She Hulk, and Moon Knight after its separation from Spider Man. So I'm assuming it's an anthology series. Yeah. It's basically like a what if anthology series. So yeah. e each issue. Will be a different, will be a different person who has, has the symbiote and what they do. And here we already see, yeah, Behold taking it. We, there's Wolverine over there, 
And um, it was actually funny because I was reading an article that that some fans were really digging the She-Hulk Venom to the point we're calling her like a, calling her a muscle mommy, and I'm like, okay, y'all need to chill. Oh no, <laughs> yeah, y'all y'all need to really relax now. Like, come on, kids, these are yeah. kids' books, <laughs> right? And then there's um, yeah, you got the Moon Knight Venom. Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange. Venom. That one looks dope. Yeah, that looks really cool. He's got some vampire shit going on there, man. That but uh, cool. this comes out February twenty eighth, I believe. The first one. Uh, yes, I think so. Yes, yes. So, number one's February twenty eighth. Awesome. You got me off the couch, jar to check. So yes. <laughs> uh, looks up. Uh, looks like Carrie is next with Max. Ooh. Oh wow! This is great. I got this whole series. So it's very sad to see Carrie had already taken it. <laughs> you gotta check your news sooner, man. I give everyone the fair She's chance. She's quick. To... <laughs> I give everybody the fair chance except me because I get the best stuff first. I mean, what? Continue, please, Carrie. <laughs> Max. You gotta you do it in Carrie. Max voice, though, Carrie. The Max. Oh, that's right. I can't. I'm not Jar Jar for that part, but um. Back in uh, March 1993, the Max debuted through Image Comics with by Sam Keith. And now we have Channing Tatum bringing it to the big screen. We had a 13-episode animated series on MTV back in 1995. But um, back in 2019, Channing Tatum said he really wanted to bring the Max um, into a, onto the big screen with his production company, Free Association. And... Uh, to, combined with Vertigo Entertainment um, with Roy Lee. And now Crystal Moselle is attached to the project uh, to write and direct the adaptation for Paramount. Uh, you might know her from the documentaries Wolfpack and Sophia. And um, Channing Tatum, he, he just had here, there's a quote why he's all about it. Um, oh my God, I'm so excited for this. I can't even explain the Max. This is a childhood love of mine. The truly brilliant genius creation of Sam Keith. Tatum said in an Instagram post featuring screenshots with Max inaugural issues. Yes, I'm totally doing this. I have no idea what Channing Tatum acts like, but when he was grounded, he wasn't allowed to watch TV. So he would sneak out and watch the Max because that was worth getting caught for. And, um, the Max, Julie Winters, and Mr. Gone taught me things about life, seeded complex ideas in my young mind that had profound effect on how I viewed the world and the roles that we played that I only intellectually understood way later. I can't wait to bring this to life and try to bring it to generations that miss it. So, yeah. The Max. It would be interesting how how uh, close they stay to the comic and if, if uh, they go different route because the the cartoon was pretty close to the comic until the end of it. Yeah, the end of it got like the end. I feel like the ending jar always gets a little bonkers because yeah. they, they they want to preserve it, but then they like, well, maybe we try something a little different. And I'm just like, no, stay no, the course, please. go with it, go with it, embrace the weird. For her, he can be a hero. Yeah, a hero. That was my bet. A hero. <laughs> you know, um, no, but I, I swear to God, the voices for the show were so kind of like, on point. Yeah, they were. like I could still hear Mister Gon's like creepy narrative, and I'm like, oh god. Like, and, and didn't when we we did a review of this a while ago, and I'm yeah. pretty sure we checked the voice actor for the Max. Like he didn't do anything else after. No, it was just 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 he he got maxed out. You know. I remember when you guys did that because I was still a, just a viewer at the time. And because I, I wrote up, um, one of my friends was playing with all of my toys and action figures and stuff. And the Max had a battle royale and he actually ended up throwing Cthulhu across the room and the Max won everything. Well, so, yeah. Yeah. Because he, he's the Jungle King. He has to protect the Jungle Queen from the squid monster. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Or, well, listen, if this happens and they do it right, I'm all for it. So, huzzah. I mean, we've been waiting five years, but now it's, okay, yeah, again. 
I'm all for it if it makes the comics actually valuable. <laughs> just like it's one of those '90s comics, so like I have the entire run and it just sits there. Ooh, and I'm like, oh. it's one of the first Image comics to come out, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yep. So, yeah. so, so, so maybe we should all. Like, year or so. What? So, so basically, what I'm by hearing, now, what, what I'm hearing, Jar, is fan first, then collector second. <laughs> Oh, I, no, no. Uh, I, I was a collector first. I, I, okay. I, I bought them all just because, you know, the, who who didn't want the Max? So, but, it, like, they, you, you also, when you buy these things, are like, you know, it'd be nice to see some movement on them. Uh-huh. So this is your right, idea. Leo? Is this your idea of insider trading? You're just like, I'm going to manipulate the market a little bit. Get a little slide. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's see if we can get anybody to buy high. Buy high, sell low, and remember orange juice. But orange enough juice. trading places. So what's what's next, Leo? Uh, looks like some raw issues are going for about ten bucks. Uh, you can... <laughs> That's um, good. Yeah, That's yeah. better than they used to be. Like ten bucks. Get out. Just Leo, get out. Hit while the iron's hot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> Check <laughs> All right, who's next? Is this Carrie again? No, this is no, me. This is Leo. You? Okay, cool. Because I felt like at some point we kind of were pigeonholing Carrie to be the Spider Verse person, and I was like, I know for a fact, okay, that she's only read Ultimate Spider Man. Like, stop. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, it may be beneficial for us to like pick, you know, like. I'm the Batman guy and Carrie is the Marvel girl and like you know I'm the spooky one. I yeah, she's the, she's our she's our she's our she's last, our uh, last week he called her the Marvel girl. Okay, first things first. Okay, every week is different, so we adjust. Okay. You're still the super dude, she's the gothy video. chick. That's Jimmy Olsen grown up, and me, I'm just the Drew. Okay. So you know, I'm the man. How are you doing today? Yeah. So, all right. So, okay. So, Edge of Spider Verse number three continues the thrilling web slinging saga. Haha. Ha, see what I did there? So, following Ooh. electrifying appearances of the high tech hero Spider Bite and the enigmatic Spooky Man, mm-hmm. this April, the anthology series spins a new web with tales of these dynamic characters and the fashion forward web weaver. Who will once again strut his stuff in a story that promises action with a side of flair? Uh, Leo, um, yeah. buddy, I, I don't mean to do this again, but I think you got the spider wrong. This is the space spider. This is the space. Well, spider. Yeah, the ones you were referring to were last time I did this. That was this issue too. So this is oh, what the fuck? space spider, and then you. But no, you're but you're half right. The one that you described that's the space spider. This is Spider Man, but in space. And the web weaver is the second story. That's the one where Spider Man's like a model. So this is Space Spider. So just keep going. You're fine. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't. Uh, my stats were wrong. Like, what the heck? Uh, okay. So this is going to be uh, coming out this April, Spider Verse number three, with uh, uh, Chad Harden's cover art. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. So um, that's it, all I it, have. Interesting to see, like again, it's really nice to see these creators getting a chance to create new spider people, you know. And um, yeah, it's always nice to see what what new interpretations because it just really showed I, the I character going to the Doctor Strange verse or, or or the 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 Moon Knight verse, like. We've had a, a ton of spider people. I, I, I want some other people. Or how about we do some good stories with the people we have? <laughs> oh, I mean, jar, whoa, whoa, whoa. Jar, 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 jar. That's a lot, man. Get back to creating another Spider-Man, okay? That's what, that, that's okay, what another about. Spider-Man. My bad. Yeah. So, so how do you feel about being tricked into a read a new uh, origin story, Jar Jar? <laughs> Every day, I, I liked it a lot. The it's a different kind of origin story, but like, yeah, and it didn't come out as an origin story till that last issue. It's just like everything dropped on you at once, and you're just like, "Oh, you son of a bitch!" So what I'm hearing is we have to trick you to like origin, and also like 
I I too thought it was an else world. Uh, I did not know it was a uh, continuity. That's pretty uh, pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. And just for reference, if you were have not been paying attention, he was talking about Gotham Year One. So just in case, yes. Some of y'all fall asleep. Wake up. We're not done yet. What's next? Uh, I screwed up. I don't know if I should continue. You should. I feel terrible about it. Leo, oh, don't feel bad. Leo, press the button on the keyboard and keep going. <laughs> Uh, I believe this is Jar. Uh, no, this is you, Drew. Sure. Yes, this is me. Sure, sure, sure. Issue two of Ultimate Spider-Man. First things first. Congratulations to Hickman and his collaborator Marco Cicchetto. Uh This it, issue one sold amazingly. It's already on a second printing. Um, super pumped. Now we're getting issue two, and we're getting a new version of a character. If you're fa familiar with the Ultimate Spider-Man. They are reinventing one of the greatest jokes of the Ultimate Spider-Man. Yeah. Uh, if you do know Spider-Man, you know now that Peter Parker, excuse me, we will see Peter Parker, now the new Ultimate Spider-Man, taking on his first fight with the Shocker. Uh, Peter is not going to be the only person um, fighting uh, uh, supervillains. We're going to see... Uh, other members of Peter Parker's family uh, exploring the new identity and motives of the Green Goblin. But, kids, question is, who could be the Green Goblin? As we've already seen, Norman Osborn in this Ultimate Universe is no more. So, who could that could it be now? Do, 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 do. Who could it be now? Who could it be now? Okay, cool. That's that fine. That's we, 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 you tried. But, um, the thing that it's really great is that we're having Shocker, who, or as we like to call him, the crazy quilt man. Uh, it, but Chichetto was talking of nothing but but compliments to his collaborator Hickman, but that he really wanted to get a version of the Shocker who was new. He's at the beginning of his career. He wears like a bomb squad suit to protect himself from his power gloves, which look awesome. Um, but he still has some of his detail. Like you see the patterns and whatnot. So yeah, it's just so great because these guys clearly are living everything they're recreating with their character. That Green Goblin suit, it has some nice throwbacks to Sam Raimi's Green Goblin while still being very in line with what we know of the Green Goblin, who from what we can tell of the design, spoiler, it's Harry Osborn. So there you go, kids. Spoiler. Spoiler, it, but I love that everybody, the shocker real. yes, but I will say this, everybody, issue one was amazing. Even if you have to get a second printing, please do. This book was worth the support. Like if that's the kind of quality storytelling we're bringing to the ultimate universe. Yes. More, please. Thank you. So I even read it. Like what the hell is up with that? I know. And you haven't read and you don't like reading ultimate stuff. I mean, it's not that you don't, it's that you're, you're, you're you know, if we made it a TV I, show, you'd watch it. No, it no, was no. Good, I, yeah. I did enjoy the first run of the original Ultimate Spider-Man. I didn't read any other Ultimate stuff. Yeah, it's because uh, I didn't make you a list. Like, you know. I know, I know, I know. But also, I don't have time. I know. Uh, so, but, but, yeah, uh, Jar, Jar, Jar Jar, it was good. It was great. Okay. But, yeah, so this is available February 14th, everybody. Next month, please, if you yeah. are don't have it on your pull list, adds ultimate spider-man to it you are not going to regret it there and you, if you do i'm not liable for your money back next please there you go okay perfect for valentine's day get your uh significant uh, other a copy of ultimate spider-man number two are you saying get your weird. significant uh, other the shocker and the goblin because that just sounds <laughs> like the shocker like, and the goblin <laughs> that just sounds like the word you know what i'm just gonna do it next story please <laughs> Uh okay. I missed one. Okay, there we go. Jar Jar. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Hey, prominent writer Jason Aaron is set to join IDW's ongoing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comics in June. And the story's even bigger because uh they've released who the artists are now, and I mm -hmm. freaking should have written them down, but it's I okay. Didn't. Jar, Jar, I got it. Jar, I got it for next week. 
Oh, but, okay. Yeah. Oh, well, look at that. Uh, this news comes after Aaron's recent departure from a long-standing exclusive contract with Marvel Comics, where he notably had an extended run on The Avengers, currently engaged in writing for DC titles like Action Comics and Batman Offworld. Aaron is now expanding his creative reach to include the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, despite the upcoming relaunch, which uh, is a fresh Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one. It mm -hmm. is not... And we repeat, it is not a reboot. It, right. it, it continues the continuity from the, the last series that just ended. Mm -hmm. uh, instead, Aaron will seamlessly integrate into the current continuity, kicking off with a 10-page preview story in a one-shot titled Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Alpha Number 1. So be on the lookout for that, which is scheduled for release in June. Mm -hmm. uh, following the TM... And T Alpha One Shot, Aaron will officially relaunch the title in July with the artist for the project yet to be announced, which I just lied. It will be announcing that next week. So stay tuned to next week. Yeah. <laughs> so 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 back up, it's doing a continuation, then a relaunch. No, no, no. It, it's they're uh they're ending the series, not ending the series, but uh, finishing up the story arc they're on. Mm -hmm. And when Aaron comes in, they'll have uh, start with an all new number one. Okay. So but all new number one, but still in continu same continuity. Yeah. Got it. So, so basically, Leo, they're ending this book. They're at, quote unquote ending the current run at 150. They'll create a book by Jason Aaron that's the alpha book to kind of bridge the story. And then leading to the new issue one, which again is not a reboot, it's just essentially renumbering back. Okay, sounds good. I'm Thank loving you. the artwork on these turtles. Yeah, oh, yeah. And the names are right there. I feel indeed, like. indeed. But, yeah, but, I, but, I, I, but I had you covered. Yeah, no, but don't worry, Jar. I already covered it next week, so we can just go into it then. Cool beans. Yeah, I'm excited for this. I, I, I've always been looking for a new jumping on point to the new continuity. Mm -hmm. And th this is perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. All did, right. you, did you jump on the Transformers yet? No, mm -hmm. no, I should. Especially with that Cobra Commander issue just coming out. Oh, I heard really. Leo, good. you got to get that. Yep. I heard some great it. things about that issue, actually. So, yeah, totally get on that, Leo. Okay. Wow. Uh, Carrie, you're up. Oh, yeah, this it's... looks great. Okay, so you're a fan of Francis Ford Coppola, Brian De Palma, Alfred Hitchcock. Uh, Boom Studios is releasing uh, Blow Away. Um, this is issue number one. Uh, there's three different covers for that. If if you want to run me back to the... Okay, this one should be... Uh, okay, Annie Wu, known for Hawkeye. Um, the next one is... The Tyler Boss cover, and mm. then the last one is the Tula Lote. And cool. this is a neo noir setting style of story. Um, it's about a wildlife photographer who thinks she has captured a murder um, with two like cliff climbers. And um, so she's trying to go through and discover whether what she saw actually happened or not. And it kind of gives all those like creepy vibes in the background. And um, they wanted to bring in kind of a thing where currently, you know, everybody has access to everything. And so taking her way out in the wild and doing, uh, having the filming out there. So you aren't in the middle of the city where there's CCTV and stuff everywhere, trying to track down and figure out whether what she saw is what she actually thought she saw or not. And it um, looks like was it's it a pudding great. tat? <laughs> no, it wasn't a pudding tat. God damn it! It was, it was not a pudding tat. Uh, so we're going to be getting this in comic shops on April seventeenth, twenty twenty four, and the writer is Zach Thompson, and we're also getting um, art by Nicola Izo. I wanted to make sure I was pronouncing that right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah. This is kind of, like I said, comes out April twenty, April seventeenth, twenty twenty four, and I think it looks just gorgeous. The I, the artwork is astounding. I swear, Boom is just killing it with all these great creator books they've been pumping out news about the last couple of months. Like, 
Like we talk about image being a home. I feel like boom is just really giving all these upcoming and current creators just a great platform to just tell these really creative, it like new stories. I was like, my God, you know, boom and image. I've been, I've been reading a lot from recently. So mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm getting really impressed that, which is taking me off some of my other books, but I'm still just like, wow, nice. Yeah. They, we we finally have we're getting to an age now where a lot of the more independent uh comic producers it's not just the big two anymore that people are looking at well uh, good getting a lot out there yeah covid helped with something it it gave the comic book artists a huge platform so there you go all right well when do you say this is out Carrie? uh this comes out april, april 17th. 17th all right gonna have to give this a whirl when it comes out all right very yeah. cool well, speaking of independent artists, like, you know, a, a little unknown book called The Batman and little little company, <laughs> DC, you know, it, it's <laughs> uh, I, I don't know if everybody's reading it. What year is it? <laughs> I, I, I hear that. I hear that that the Batman is quite brave and bold. Yeah. Oh, yes. So, so if you haven't given it a chance, I'm, I'm I'm loving Batman Brave and Bold. I need to get caught up. But like uh, the first something like six issues, it's mm -hmm. a little weird because they do like short stories. Like, you know, each issue will be like anthologies. You know, yeah. But like, uh, you know, like the Joker one, which is the friggin spookiest one of all. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, it's like a Joker year one. Um, but it. it they don't cover every single issue, but yeah, the, the, the artwork, the storytelling, absolutely friggin' phenomenal, but we're talking about Bra Batman brave and bold. Number 12 is going to be coming out. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, yeah, uh, it is an anthology theory, uh, theories, theory, it's a theory. <laughs> anthology <laughs> theories, Leo. Continue. <laughs> uh, so there's going to be a new chapter called Batman black and white saga. Uh, we're, 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 we're you're going to say something, Drew? No, I said sweet. Oh, sweet. Okay. Well, compliment. Like, continue. You're doing great, buddy. Keep going. <laughs> uh, okay. So we're going to be seeing a special crossover as Charlie Adler, famed for his work on The Walking Dead, joins forces with writer Herrick Hanna. They're going to be crafting an eight-page narrative that introduces us to a reformed small-time criminal whose life changes after an encounter with the Batman. So the story is called Henchman. It's a black and white piece where Adler and Hannah unleash their signature intense storytelling. It centers around Barney Peterson, a former Gotham City criminal who's hit rock bottom because of his past deeds. The key question here is Batman's stance on redemption. Does he believe in good in second chances or is he more once a criminal, always a criminal kind of hero? Adler also steps in with a variant cover for the issue, illustrating the spine-chilling showdown between Peterson and Batman. But that's not all for the issue. Batman the Brave and Bold number 12 also wraps up a Batman Maps Mizaguchi team-up story by Carl Kirchi of Gotham Academy fame. Mm -hmm. There's an Artemis tale from Delia Dawson, uh, Dawson and Serg Akuna, and a Lois Lane story by Turin Granabek. And Fernando Passerin. So mm -hmm. topping it off, uh, Simone, known for Batman and Robin, provides the main cover art. So Batman aficionados can uh, uh, have the issue packs. Uh, yeah, never mind. Forget that. April 23rd, it comes out. Well, <laughs> I think this is also really important to note, Leo, that this is one of the first times that Charlie uh, Charles Alder has been doing Batman in like 20 years, man. It's been a long time since we've seen him do like a Batman story. I didn't so, know he actually had done Batman before. He did he he did some stuff back like early in his career. He did like a Batman issue one or two. You see him pop up. He I know he was on for one or two because back when I was doing my 90s binge of DC, you know, like four months ago. I would see him pop up in like an issue of Nightwing or Batman and stuff. I'm like, what? Like, is this, I know this style, like Batman, but with zombies. I'm like, no, it's Charlie. Alvin. I'm like, Oh, cool, cool. but yeah, but it's the last story he did. That was Batman related. It was like 20 years ago. So this is like really big or clips too. I'm really digging the black and white artwork as well. And, uh, 
you know, thinking about this and then we have that 30s Batman story coming out as well. I think we're going to be, you know, having some prime Batman stories coming on. Well, 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 Leo, trust me, when they're coming, we know we'll, we'll just assign them to you. So, you know. All cool. of my onesie for support. There you go. Um, <laughs> all right. So what's next? That. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be Drew. Oh, it's me again. Yeah. Yes. Okay. This was, I just read this issue a couple of days ago. This was too cute not to bring up. So the latest issue of Nightwing, which is a Beast World tie-in, um, famously references famous uh, writer Gail Simone, Birds of Prey's notable, uh, and, and Batgirl writer as a bear. So um, Tom Taylor, uh, who has been writing Nightwing, uh, famously right Nightwing, um, has a great friendship with uh, writer Gail Simone and is essentially, it's been a long joke on her social media that she is a bear pretending to be a comic book writer. Uh, so she has this mock feud with Tom Taylor based on the idea that real writers have to fight with each other. So he's referenced her as a bear in a lot of his recent comics. So in Nightwing 87, there was a mock poster promoting the G. Simone Blood Feud show. Right in the back there, kids. Um, in Superman, Son of Kal-El 2021, Annual Issue 1, uh, Jonathan Kent rescued a pregnant polar bear and gave her a home at the Fortress of Solitude, uh, who was named Gale, which his father agreed by name for a bear. So but this time we've got uh, John Kent and Dick Grayson searching for the missing Damian Wayne, who had been transformed as the events of Beast World, uh, it leading them to an underground arena where some of the quote unquote Beast Hulk that are created by this crisis were forced to fight. Damian had been transformed into a mere sassy and yet still aggressive cat boy, and his match was an enraged bear woman called Gail the Slayer, who was a former hairdresser, which mm -hmm. Gail Simone, before bec becoming a full time comic book writer was a hairdresser. So this is a hilarious nod. Um, I thought it was too goddamn cute. And what the hell not? We need to do more things like this because it's just so fucking funny. That's awesome. Yeah. Right? I like the, it's almost like a, a fake little uh, combat between her and him. Well, that, well that's think... funny. Now she needs to throw him into some books. Well, you know what it is, Jar, is that we hear about comic writers feuding all the time, you know, whether it's a script screaming of opinion or work or, you know, something was said to someone or a supporter or anything like that. Just nice to have somebody kind of play it up, but then have just total fun with it. Yeah. You know, and I've met, I've met Gail Simone. She's a really pleasant person. Um, and she's really great. She did something for my friend, Amanda. I'll never forget, which was so cool. And I've never yet to meet Tom Taylor, but some of my friends have, and they say he's just a super gent. So maybe one day. But yes, I'm sure it'll happen one day. One day. But actually, Gail was asking what cons she's not going to this on on the social medias. What cons she's not hit up, and uh, a, a Mitch Halleck chimed in real fast. So <laughs> I bet he who did. knows, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe not this year, but maybe the year after. That'd be cool. Yes, you know, huh? we'll That'd be cool. That terrific con. Maybe, but so, Gail Simone, everybody. Well, and also Titans Beast World. I've been hearing some good things about that. I also heard there was a major death. Also, yes, there's a lot of big stuff happening. It is a great story, um, and I honestly, I know uh, Ivan Rice is no longer working with DC due to his association with Ghost Machine now. But honestly, as this is, in my mind, one of the last stories he does for DC before that, what a way to go out, man. The art is just amazing. Nice. Uh, and Tom has just been killing it both in his stories in Beast World and um, Nightwing and Titans. Just absolutely fucking amazing. So just cannot recommend it enough. So yeah, Leo, add it to your list. Okay. And last up is going to be Carrie. Yeah, last night when I was getting all these, I went and checked my uh, 
Gmail and I had to make another one because I read Chip Zdarsky's newsletter and uh, Avengers Twilight number one has already sold out. Are so, they all sparkly? Um, Sorry, no, Twilight reference. Sparkly. Get them. Okay. It's it's in these twilight years. So ah, that, that's the, the, got it, got it. That makes so much sense. Yeah, I didn't know either until I read it, which oh is fabulous, God. by the way. But so this is uh, getting a second printing, and this is a new cover, David Akun, and um, it will be out on February twenty eighth. So get your local comic book shop and have that waiting for you if you missed the first one or if you just want both covers. Agreed. Yeah, okay. and I, that was just quick. So that's all I got okay. for that. Oh. Awesome. Cool. Really pretty. I like that cover better than the original one, actually. Drew, wake up. Uh, are we are we ending the show? No, we it just began. Uh, cool. Oh, my God. <laughs> you son of a bitch. You, you slept all the way till next week, Drew. Oh, okay. I've been cool. sitting here waiting well, for you. All right. Well, everybody, if it's last last week or next week, either way, everybody, next week we have a great guest coming on. We're gonna have letterer extraordinaire Rob Lee of Ghost Machine coming on. He's gonna talk about uh, Ghost Machine issue one, which will be hitting stores soon. Uh, his collaboration, of course, with some of the greats like the great Jeff Johns, among others. We're gonna have him on. We're super pumped to have him. And stay tuned because somebody name dropped in this episode. There was a name drop of somebody who we have planned for the show later this year. So definitely mm. look for that. Was it Godzilla? It was totally Godzilla. We're gonna have oh, to fuck yeah. <laughs> well, on that note, we're going to wrap things up. I want to thank everybody for watching this fine evening. You know me. You know how to find me. Uh, and you heard it earlier. I'm on Blue Sky. Go find me. Uh -huh. uh, and also head on over to thedorkening.com. A lot of awesome people doing a lot of awesome stuff. So head on over to thedorkening.com. Also check out our YouTube page for Splash Pages, uh, trying to put up more content. So uh, go like, follow, subscribe, do all the things. Click the bell. Make sure you check out that. And uh, we're going to try to make some more, you know, exclusive stuff for just for YouTube. So uh, with that, we'll kick it over to Jar Jar. He froze. No, he didn't. <laughs> My goodness, everybody. Check out Comic Book Lovers Buy, Sell, Trade, and Auction House on Facebook. Come say hi to me on Facebook. Um, you're not on Facebook yet. You have to come say it on Facebook. Nobody ever says hi on Facebook. It's just they all leave their little opinion and run away. Um, Do people poke still? I don't know. I, I is that still a thing on the Facebooks? I don't know. Can you get distracted? I, wrap it up. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, with that, uh, make sure to check out the latest episode of the Reeducation of Nancy Ann Ritter, where we uh, watched The Hills Have Eyes. It was a fantastic episode, I thought. It was a lot of fun. And um, yeah, with that, I guess we'll throw it over to Carrie. All right. Hey, everybody. When I am not here with these lovely gents, I am on the Owl Eye Network, which is also part of the Dorking Network. Um, to find me, go to the, uh, oh, wait, there it is, Carrie Sanders on Facebook. My author page, um, all my links to my Owl Eye stuff, all my links to here stuff are all there. If you see a little crow, that's me. Um, we have a 24 hour show that's going to be coming up in a couple of weeks that we're going to do. Uh, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and I, we have so many shows. Just go go check out the All Light Network sometime as well. You can follow it there. Do it. That's, that's me. That's me. I'm done. Bye. Thank you. Hello, it's Marshmallow. I. Okay, I'm bored. Um, hey, everybody. Um, when I'm not falling asleep during the show, um. I you can find me on places like um, Facebook. I'm on Instagram. Check down below if you really want to. And uh, among other things, uh, regrettably, I'm no longer with Screen Rant, but working on improving that uh, in the near future. Uh, but still, that means I'm here every Tuesday with these people. Where I'm doing a bunch of other stuff as well because I don't know. I'm a sucker for punishment and I hate being bored. So 
We've got a lot of great stuff coming up. Check us out next week with Rob Lee. And I don't know, like, hope you had a good time. Go to sleep. God, it's late. That was wonderful. Thank you. Go to sleep. <laughs> uh, with that, we'll catch you later. Bye. Bye.